Hey, mm -hmm. how's everybody doing? Mic check, mic check, mic check. Okay, I uh, I did this the other day, and I I don't I really don't know, but I I it was like I'm I'm doing this the mic check thing, and I could hear it clear as day, but I did like three mic checks before I could hear it here. I'm not having any problems today. I heard it, but that was weird. So, like, when you hear that, um, regardless of what, you know, if you think I'm nuts, uh, fair enough. But those times where I did the mic check, like, multiple times, uh, it was not something I could hear. And I didn't really change the volume too much. But... It is what it is. Okay, now, uh, about the game, I have a... I have a... Uh, I get rid of this. But uh, I have a mending. Uh, I have a mending villager. Um, I don't think I have a. I don't think I have an un, uh, uh, unbreaking one. But uh, what I'm doing now is, uh, I I could always use other stuff. But now I'm looking for stuff that I can uh, trade in for experience so I can re uh, heal up my axe. Um, okay, now I'm going to go off script a little bit, hopefully make this make a little longer. Uh, I am watching a show, and it's on, I think I'm watching it on Roku, but I, I, Crackle, I think, has it, and Tubi and a couple other free channels have it, but it's called uh, Sea Patrol, and... Uh, when I, I like it. It's a good show, but uh, it it it's kind of like it's like it's like Australia's version of the Coast Guard. Um, and these guys, like you got the guy who's the captain, he's a lieutenant commander or whatever. I think I. I um, but it's like a, it's like a glorified, uh, it's like a glorified YouTube boat. Uh, I, I wouldn't even call it a destroyer cause it doesn't have missiles. Now maybe it, it's a, de a destroyer, but they call it the warship, the warship hammersmith. <laughs> so I always crack up when they do it cause it, you know, okay. You know, but, um, they, uh, and, and I, I got to stress, I, I firmly believe that they are making what is an ordinary job exciting for TV because you know I, you know they're, they're you know every 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 fishing plot that they deal with involves drug runners or what and, and I don't care they got they got attractive see if they made a if they made a, a, a show about the uh, if they made a show about the uh, Border Patrol, you know, in reality, it's probably a lot more boring. And, you know, yeah, they do get into some shit. Every now and then they're outgunned by, uh, every now and then they're outgunned by uh, drug drug cartels. I mean, they literally have more weapons than the drug cartels or uh, than the, the Border Patrol. But, because, uh, 
I, I just I want to I want to throw it out there because I, I got a brother who served in the military, and he you know it's a feel good show. We used to watch uh, JAG or NCIS, and then he'd get all fucking butt hurt, you know, because he seemed to think that he was the only one that understood that that wasn't the way it really was. He he really didn't understand like. Uh, Um, you know, and I, I watched something. This was back back when the movie came out. They did a movie on, they did a documentary on the making of Top Gun. And they pointed out that the, the movie did not look anything like, uh, did not like anything like the way real fighter pilots trained, lived, and all that. But, you know, un unlike members of my family, they weren't all butthurt. They enjoyed it because they realized it was making them look good. You know, um, you know whether it's JAG or what. You know, and the other thing is, it, this is something I think it's drilled in at boot camp. But I, you know, I don't know for a fact, but I can read, and when you read. When you read the uh, section that created the Marines, they are part of the Navy. I gotta go to the bathroom. I'll be right back.
I'm back. Uh, almost had a repeat of the other day. Uh, okay. Um, hey, I thought of something. I'm just giving you a little update. Uh, the other day... It's not bad. It's just news. Um, the other day when I went to the grocery store, and it it was the one I it was the one that's close to me. It, it's the one that's not too big. By the time I got done in in the store, my foot was starting to hurt, and it didn't pop or anything like that. But it was just starting to hurt. And then when I got out to the car, and this is what I normally do, um, I usually, in the store, I don't really have a choice. But when I get out to the car, I sit in the back of the car and pull the heavy stuff out while I'm sitting down and uh, to protect my foot. And when I got done sitting down and stood up, it didn't really hurt that much. And the thing I, I will notice is... Um, my, uh, these slippers I wear, uh, up until the, that day, I, I could, I could basically put, put them on without any hands on my left foot, my good foot. But the one, the right foot where I broke my ankle, I, I had to like put my shoe, I had to put my foot in front of it or brace it again because I couldn't slip the, uh, the broken foot in. Well, some of the time I can I, I think and I've noticed that the some of the toes are can move a little bit more now I, I'm I don't know if it's good or bad because I, I was worried I was gonna have to go see the doctor but the next day it didn't really hurt um and uh but I can some some most of the time I can slip the shoe on without and it, it's 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 just a slipper, but I can slip it on my right foot so that that's good news. And then today I woke up. I don't usually when this happens usually not always when my when I have injuries and I don't remember how I got them it, it's an indication I've been sleepwalking. Well today. I woke up and my, I don't remember hitting anything with it yesterday, but my big toe feels like it's broken or, or injured. And when I woke up, my, my right leg was a little, my right foot was a little sore. And I'm thinking maybe I'm walking in my sleep again. I don't know. And that could be bad. You know, my foot isn't bad enough that my body isn't want to, but it's not good enough that it feels great. So I might put some ice on it today. The only thing is it's so cold. Uh, I haven't been using ice because it, it fucking dry. I get like a dry. I get something wrong with my skin when I put it on. But I might have to try and put a, a ice pack on. Okay, back to uh, this uh, show I've been watching. I, I just, I you know, he, um, he, and again, I'm just, re all, all I'm going by is what I'm reading. You know, the Marines are a division of the Navy. They're part of the Navy. Um, it, it's right there. It, it's somewhere in the law or whatever, the Constitution. Um, they're, they're there. And, you know, you, you notice the Navy doesn't really have security. They have Marines on board. They're the only ones that are allowed to carry weapons usually on board the ships. They only have a Navy Academy. They do not. I don't think they have a Marine Academy. I, I think both branches go to Annapolis for Marines and Navy. Um, but, you know, you, know you, you can be wrong. You can be loud. You can raise your voice, but it doesn't make you right. Um, but, yeah, they... Uh, but I, I, I like the show, and the other thing that's kind of interesting about it is they, uh, it's kind of realistic. Like every season or two, they, they, you know, people drift off. Like they either quit the Navy or uh, they move on to another part of service. And, you know, it's, it's like this is, you know, it isn't like the Coast Guard. It's like, it's, well, it's like the Coast Guard, but it was part of the Navy. 
and uh, some of them go on to, you know, the, the real Navy. I, I, I don't want to say that. I really don't want to offend them. I really do like the show. Um, but uh, I don't understand the joke. Um, they're... When I used to watch, uh, when I used to watch uh, the young ones, <laughs> that that your even you might even your uh, grandparents might. It, it just depends on whether they watched it or not. But uh, hang on. But the young ones had they. It was it was pretty clear that they were using jokes that were culture specific. And like they, they'd make a joke uh, about Richard Cleef or, or, or not. I can't remember if it was a poet or a musician or something. Cleef Richards, that's it. Not, not Yeah, Cleef, Cleef Richards, Richards, I think, was his name. And they'd make a joke about him, and I wouldn't get that. Well, that's fine. But uh, this one here... They are Australian. And there was somebody I, I used to play with. I, I watched. He hadn't been on in fucking Coon's age. But uh, he hasn't been. Oh, maybe that's maybe that's wrong to say. He hadn't been on in a while. Uh, but he. Uh, yeah, if, if that's. I apologize. That's just something. I, I don't even think about it. But. Uh. That's probably something that's not even appropriate to say anymore, and I apologize. Uh, but I'm sorry. I'm getting a little tired, so I'm doing the best I can. But uh, they uh, he mentioned that they they have like a different they have a different you know viewpoint on it. Like over here, something might be offensive, and over there it isn't. They they get offended by other things, and I'm like, well, that makes sense. And the captain of the ship, he's been in there every season. I think his EXO has either been through it through the whole season, or she came in on the second season. But as it stands now. There is, I'm better with, he'd be like the sergeant grade if it was a, if it was a movie with land-based troops. I'm not that, I'm not that up on uh, Navy ranks and that. Uh, like midshipman, master chief, I don't know where any of that fits. But the one guy, I think he'd be the equivalent of a sergeant. And he's in charge of the... Uh, He's in charge of the engine room or whatever, but it's like uh, it's like submarine duty. Like everybody has to know everybody else's, with the exception of the cook and the uh, medic. Uh, everybody has to know everybody else's job so they can step up. So that's kind of cool, but I haven't been able to figure it out. And it was early, I think, this season. It'd be the the one they report to. Uh, the one they report to at fleet. It'd be like an administrator position. Uh, the first couple seasons, it was a guy they were reporting to. Well, now it's a girl. And she's pretty attractive. She's a little bit older, but she's pretty attractive. And her character's name is White. And that's that's what it all has to do with. And... He said he was going to get a hold of Captain White or Admiral White or whatever. And uh, the EXO called her Knockers. This is what, you know, if if it was if it was a simple thing of Cleef Richards or whatever, I probably wouldn't care. But, uh, but she's, she's attractive. She's got a pretty impressive rack, and her name is Knockers. Nickname's Knockers. And, I mean, and they, it, it's it's just so funny. They got, like, one guy on there. His nickname's Two Dads. Uh, the She was, she was uh, I was really sad to see her go. She was really attractive. She was, uh, 
her, the actress's name is Christy Lee Allen or something like that. Oh my God, she is very, very attractive. She has got one hell of a profile. And uh, she was on for one or two seasons. She was the cook. And uh, oh my God, it was really sad. I, I think that's why it only went five seasons because they got rid of her. And uh, but oh my, it, she was very nice. She she was a good actress too, you know. Um, but she left the show, and I, I think that's why the show ended. I it, either that or it's still being made. I, it, it might be still being made, but it might be over. I don't know. I don't really. I haven't really looked at the year on it. And uh, but I if you know, please go and. Uh, go and uh, put something on the YouTube channel. But I'm just kind of curious, because like the ex said, oh, well, with a name like White, something along those lines, it was because of her name being White, I bet you they all call her Knockers or something like that. So I, I don't I don't get it. I, I, I just, I don't get it. Uh, you know, over here, anybody with the name of Richard is usually known as a dick. Uh, so, you know, and they, that might not be something that they understand. I, I it's something along those lines, but I am, I'm, it, it, you know, again, and then, well, the other thing was they were playing cards and one of the girls go, Oh, I got a threesome. And, and I'm like, well, you know, I'm like that, that was interesting, but I, I figured out what that was. That's just their way of saying three of a kind, but it's like, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's something, somebody that cute can't say that around me. Cause that inappropriateness is going to come busting through the door like a fucking Kool-Aid man on crack. But, uh, oh my God. But, uh, I, 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 but they do, they, they, they make it, you know, mo even most of the, most of the stuff they deal with is people fishing inappropriately. Maybe not, I wouldn't want to say it's like, you know, nine, nine out of 10 shows, but it's about half the thing, something along with fishing violations or whatever. But, uh, I really, you know, maybe I'm wrong. And if you know I'm wrong, hey, put that on there. Come to come to YouTube and uh, put that on there. But I just don't think that every fisherman is a mob connection or what. I mean, it, it's, you know, but again, I, I enjoy the show. I really enjoy the show. Uh, but, uh, God. Oh, anyways, get off of that. Um I don't know. I really don't know. Um, I I don't remember it like four years ago. I really don't remember it. But Bill Murray and I thought it re I thought it just came out. They were there were these uh, Jeep commercials with uh, Bill Murray and he was recreating Groundhog Day. And uh, I saw the commercial. I'm laughing my ass off. I am, I mean, now granted, I was in pretty rough shape in 2000, again, and they said it was coming out, it came out then, um, that, that was a bad year for me, and, uh, so I might not have been, I might not have been watching TV, or some, a, a lot of the time, it was, I wasn't remembering it. And I still got that, but I, I'm not. I'm not getting stressed out, and that that seems to affect it as much as other stuff. But uh, um, I, I don't know. But it, it. But it was. It was funny as hell. And uh, I just saw the commercials recently. Uh, that. Um, that Ghostbusters Afterlife, I don't remember when that came on. It was a it was a couple of years ago. My mom was still alive, but uh, that came out, and it was really really good. And I have been seeing these things like I think it was, I think it was last year in the fall. I was seeing these things for Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, and it was it looked like a game ad. It it looked like a game ad. It was uh it was it looked like there was anime, it was stationary, there was no video, there was no images of people. And uh they've got it, it's actually a movie. 
It's uh, and what it is, they've got the entire cast back uh, of the living cast. Uh, you've got Bill Murray's coming back. Uh, I can't remember the characters. I can't remember the character or the actor's name. But he's the guy who, when he when he he started working after they got busy and they had to hire, and he's the guy who, when he when they were talking to the mayor, he goes, "I've seen shit that would turn you white," and uh, they got uh, the the receptionist has come back. Uh, Dan Aykroyd's gonna be in it. Bill Murray is on board, and. Uh, Okay, that's, uh, and I, th they got the dickhead. They, uh, the one that was from, uh, the one that was from, uh, uh, Die Hard, the reporter, the little asshole reporter that they had to deal with. Well, he's the guy that was in the mayor's office, uh, just cause he tried, he was the environmental or something like that. And he tried to come in and they threw him out. He had to get a warrant. Well, he was just being a fucking douchebag and he's like, uh, he he just trapped these guys in in his lie, because he's the one who caused all the problem. He came in, ordered a shutdown of the whole fucking grid, and the electrician even said, "I'm not sure you should do that. I don't know what it's gonna do." And he he he's the one who caused the whole fucking problem, and uh, uh, and then uh, the one guy goes, "No." It's his problem. Uh, Dickless came in here and uh, shut down the grid, released all the thing, and he goes, "Is this true?" And Bill Murray's like, "Yes, this man has no dick." And when the guy attacked him, he's like, "Well, that's what I heard." And uh, he's back. I think he's gotten a promotion. I think he's running the department now. And uh, oh my God. But it looks really good. And the thing is, it's like a continuation of Afterlife. It, it's a, it's a flat-out continuation of Afterlife. So I highly recommend. I, I'm, 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 I'm fucked. I'm not going to be able to go see it at the theater. Uh, I'm going to have to wait until it comes on a, a theater or a, a TV show, TV uh, network I can watch. But I highly recommend you. Uh, I don't want to hear about it. But like you know, when that it's coming out March twenty second, I think, or something like that. It's it's sometime in March. But when you go see it, drop back if I'm still here. Uh, drop in and uh, uh, drop in and tell me if you liked it or not. I don't I don't want I don't want any spoilers. But just let me know if you liked it or not uh, when you get. Uh, oh my God, that is just so cool. Uh, Okay, now what I did today, it it's been feast, it's been famine. You know, I say the, these UFO videos on and the new ones, the uh, ones with uh, ones with like real people, like the experts, congressmen. It's been feast or famine. Well, we're in a we're in a famine part. We are in a bleak and desolate fucking thing. So I was I I just did a search on the TV for what's available and uh the thing that stuck out it's called demon in the white house and it, it's like an hour and a half uh and i, I had no idea what it was uh they uh i i just really literally have no idea what it was I didn't know if it was a movie. I didn't know if it was a documentary because it wasn't like a TV show where it's like, you know, history, ancient aliens or UFO witness an hour long or an hour long minus commercial breaks. So like 45 minutes or whatever. But uh, I, I just didn't know. And I started watching it and it was because uh, it didn't say what, like it wasn't saying it was from Discovery or Lifetime or or whatever. There was no indication what channel it was from, and I I didn't know if it was a direct video thing. You know it, it, it you know it, it could have been a direct video. It, was, it seemed to be very high quality, but again I I just didn't know if it was direct to video. 
and I, I didn't know if it was something that was intended to be true, if it was a movie, uh, or what. I, and I didn't know if it was... Uh, I didn't know if it was like the Blair Witch Project or... Uh, I mean, I just didn't know. And... Uh, Oh. See, I went from a dingy green to a, a bright green, so I, I healed up quite a bit. But that that's the thing. I, I didn't know if it was like the fourth. I mean, I'm not kidding. That still pisses me off because I I looked it up when it came out and everything I was finding said, oh, it was real. Um, but it was like the fourth kind. If you know, If it was like the fourth kind where it wasn't real, but they were going to make you believe it was real. I, I just didn't know. I, I didn't have a clue. And uh, so I recommend you take, I was, I, this is what I put in my notes, I recommend you take it with a grain of salt. I have not seen it, so you're getting my original reaction to it. The claims it is making, many occult things happen in the White House. Seances and spiritualism. Um... They showed a picture. I mean, I'm not making this up. You, you go look at it, you'll find out. But it showed a picture and said it looks like a demon is over his shoulder. No idea where the picture is. Uh, the mention of someone, uh, they mentioned someone was covered in his blood. And it, it didn't seem to me like they were being very specific. And that they didn't show. Uh, they, they showed a picture, but it was black and white. You couldn't really tell. And so I, I, I don't know. Take take everything in today with a grain of salt. Um, and then they said presidents and first ladies have had experiences. And when they tell you something, it's one of the most credible witnesses you could have. Um, I'm going to say you got to judge that. I'm going to say you got to judge that on a case by case basis. Um, first of all, Betty Ford was an alcoholic. I don't mean that, that that's why she did the Betty Ford Foundation or whatever, the hospital. I, I'm not being mean to her. Um, we don't really suffer from it. <laughs> We don't suffer from alcoholism in Wisconsin. We kind of, you know, enjoy it. Uh, it doesn't run in families. It strolls casually through, takes its time, gets to know people. Uh, and, you know, I think the state motto at one time was considered rehab is for quitters. Uh, but it, it's true. She was a alcoholic. Uh, Trump and Bush were both fucking idiots. Reagan had dementia. Nancy had a fixation with fortune tellers or something. You know, I, I don't I don't mean it in a bad way. And I, I would take her over some other first ladies that we've had. But uh, Nancy, uh, she had like a fixation with some stuff occult. And they uh, they even mentioned if you and it's one of the it's one of the scenes I like um, the movie Beautiful Creatures the uh, they they it's written into the script they mentioned that this uh, library was moved it used to be in the Capitol D.C. but they moved it because Nancy uh, Reagan wanted it moved and she goes I swear she's the only uh, she's the only uh, mortal that. She's the only mortal that scared them, you know, the, the, the witches, the casters and that. 
Yeah, you know, and they said, you know, she was she was the only mortal who scared him or whatever. And uh But you know, and Clinton, he might have been, you know, if he saw something, he might have been making it up to cover getting some strange. Um and Nixon when uh when he was going through the impeachment, there's stories of him walking around drunk t- talking to the talking to the fucking uh talking to the fucking uh, pictures on the wall. And, you know, so again, you got to, yeah, you know, Nixon early on might have been reliable if he said it. Um, but, you know, in the last couple, last year, last six months, he might not have been that reliable because he was drunk all the time because he thought he was going to go to jail or, or whatever. And just remember, they didn't accuse anybody. It was all general. They weren't, they weren't saying you know, this this president, that president, you know, that was it. Well, with the exception of one case. Uh, but there is one I'm going to do later. It accused the Vatican. I don't It was one my brother was watching, and when we were eating, it was on a TV that he was watching. And so I just watched it. But it, I think it was going on the Vatican archives. That was the whole gist of it. I'm, I'm, I'm planning on doing it. If I don't forget, that's I'll do that. But it was saying that the Vatican was doing like the the churchly stuff up above, and then in like uh, these underground tunnels, they were doing like pagan pagan stuff or occult stuff, and. I, I didn't watch it as long. I got a little tired and then wanted to get this done. But in, in it, it, I was going to tie it in with the last Pope prophecy. There was a lot of information in it. So it was taking longer to get through it. But my initial reaction to that, my brother was watching, was, was it's just bull crap, you know? Uh, the Da Vinci Code was more believable with the the date, the day opus or whatever you know the the fucking uh the fucking priests that were fucking beating themselves and fucking inflicting pain I, you know i did i i just I, that whole thing that they were it's like oh my god opus day yeah opus day that's it opus day was more believable than that but then i thought you know i would have felt the same way if you know back in the day you would have told me that they were fucking little kids. I, I would have been, I, I would have firmly believed, you know, and that maybe that's a failure of mine for not being smart enough to figure out that they were guilty. But I would have believed, you know, before that, that they were, you know, that was bullshit. So I'm, I'm trying to keep an open mind. And uh, with some, you know, with, with just with some of the stuff that has now come out that they, they have done, I'm thinking, you know, maybe, maybe. Because... When the uh, when the Templar Knights when they uh, when they found whatever they found, I firmly believe they found something, and then they were given it, basically the Pope was giving them what they wanted, and uh, when you look at the stuff they were putting into their churches that they built, to me it you know I I'm not an expert, but it looked kind of satanic. Uh, and they were building it into the church and the, the Vatican did not, no big deal. It, it was some creepy looking shit. Cause I mean, I'm not kidding. I heard the, I heard the, the theory that the French king accused them of, uh, fucking just some awful shit. Well, then you see some of them statues and some of the stuff they built into the, in the walls and the windows of the, it's like, oh my God. I'm not saying it, you know. I'm not saying that it's something they should be worried about, but I can honestly believe why primitive man in the 1600s or whatever, where they thought it was demonology. Um, I, ooh, it was some scary shit. Uh, they speculated that we may have things in the White House that might be demonic, or have had things in the White House that might be demonic. And uh, I, I haven't finished watch. I'm gonna watch. I might even watch it later tonight. But uh, what I went through was, uh, I made it about a third of the way, 
and uh, it, the uh, I'm not sure if I put it put it up. Uh, when we look at the world we live in, where children are murdered every day, and let's take a moment to go through the first call to action that we got here. Please reach out to all your elected officials. Let's get assisted suicide legalized, please. For the cost of an email, a tweet, or a letter, you can make Dr. Kavorian dreams and mine of having better options come true. You can. And, uh... Oh, and this here is when it first flashed the uh, Shock Docs logo. And I asked my brother, he said that he thinks, depending on the mood that it's in, that you can find that on the Discovery Channel, and you can find it sometimes on the Travel Channel. But that that's where I had a little... I mean, I'm not saying it's the best source, but at least I knew where it was coming from. And, uh, and, and just... With with, rare, with exception, most of the point, uh, most of the time, most of it, I'm going to just act like I'm believing. I'm just going to take it at face, unless unless it just puts out, and, and even even the stuff where I'm convinced it's crazy shit and, and I say it, I could be wrong. But uh, I'm just, I'm, not, I'm just going to suspend belief and I'm going to take it as read for the most part, as long as it's, you know... Not batshit fucking crazy. But uh, when you look at what's going on in the GOP and maybe some Democrats, could there be a demon influencing things? The right wing looks to be nuts right now. Um, it, it really, really does. They, they look to be nuts. They've got people talking about secession. Uh they got people talking about raising up against the uh, government. I mean, elected officials. I, he hasn't done it since, but this, I think it's Chip Roy from Texas. He was literally talking about sending the National Guard in. And I, I reached out to, uh, I, I don't know if he reads it, if they put me on a on an ignore list <laughs> or, uh, or what. But I, I, I copied the POTUS and I go, you got to get yourself in a place where you are comfortable because, you know, I, I just worry that some shit's going to happen. He's going to underreact. Um, I, when, you're, when you're talking about people that are picking, you're talking about picking up arms or seceding from the union, you got to take that seriously. I've, I've, I've tweeted out, I'll stitched out to him in the past that he's got to get ready where he's got to get ready. He's got to mobilize it and he's got to take the military out of these states. You know, he, he just literally does. And he should tell the military contractors, you know, Hey, if you want your contract, you're going to have to move out of these states. Uh, because the last thing you want to do is have them cutting off a supply to your military or, or having a supply for their military. And, you know, Texas, I think, is going to fall. Like, if, if they leave if they leave the Union, the, the, like a third of their budget is supplied by blue states. You know, it, it really, I mean, it just, I, this isn't political. This is a fact. I firmly believe that if they seceded from the Union, within a week or two, they would fall to a drug, drug cartel. They, they, I think, I think a drug cartel, I mean, these are people that could not handle the Ebola virus when they got one. Obama had to come in and save them because they, they just couldn't keep people off planes apparently or some fucking stupid shit. And, uh, uh, but it, it's just, it's, it's just nuts. And I told him, I go, you know, you gotta be, you gotta be willing. And I hope you don't need it. I sincerely hope you. Don't. I hope I'm overreacting. But I go, you gotta get, you gotta get yourself in a place where you are comfortable ordering the arrest of American citizens under the Insurrection Act. You've got to get, you've got to develop a plan for ordering the military to quit these states under the Insurrection Act. You got to look and see if it's even possible. You got to get into a place where you tell these military contractors you have to leave these states and revert, revert back to loyal states 
loyal to our government and you're going to have to set up shop there. You just can't have this anymore. And, uh, and I don't know which one, but there was a military contract that amounts to a bunch of layoffs. And I think it was in a Southern plant. So maybe, maybe it's doing some good. I don't know. But, uh, and I go, and you got to get yourself in a place where you can order the execution of anybody that picks up arms against uh, this country. You know, if they can't arrest them, you know, peacefully, then they got to put them down like rabid dogs. And th this is what you've got to do. And that dipshit Chip Roy, I have not seen him post any more stupid shit. He was going around, he was going around like three or four different uh, media networks uh fucking just talking smack about leaving the union and i i told him i go look and you you got to you got to look up uh Nan Janet Reno you got to look up the history of her you got to look up those terrorists that took over the wildlife preserve in uh when obama was president you got to look at Waco Texas uh and and you got to and you got to look at that Ashley Babbitt or whatever that was in the capitol I go, you got to understand that the reality of it is when the first body falls, about 90% of these people are going to fucking quit. You're going to see meal, meal Team 6 fucking hang it up. And that, that's just the reality of it. And, uh, you know, you, you got to be comfortable doing it because I go, you, you know, when you're dealing, I, I go, I hope I'm wrong, but I go, these people, you, you've seen them with the shutdowns of the government. They just don't appear like you can reason with them. And they've been doing this for a while. You know, like, even when Obama was in there, if they, if they were like, you know, 50,000 apart, Obama would come 25,000 in towards them, and then they'd back up 25,000. They'd still be 50,000 apart. And, and it, it, there's, it's been said before, and I'm going to probably harp on it, these are people that believe what's your what's theirs is theirs and yours is negotiable. You can't negotiate with people like that. There, uh, there was on the the local uh, the uh, NBC, MSNBC had a guest on, and she was talking she was talking pretty good because she said, "Well, I don't even like this, but this is what the government proposed. This is what they're proposing in the in the MAGA caucus," and she goes, "This is not a negotiation." He goes, this is like a hostage situation. And and he goes, and the Democrats are dealing with the, the terrorists. And she goes, but it, it is. This is not a negotiation. If it was a negotiation, it'd be a lot better. He goes, they're, they're getting everything they want. They're not getting anything significant that the Democrats want. And the fucking terrorists in the House, they don't want to go for it. They're just, they're just fucking shitting on it. Um... I don't. I, I'm. I'm getting. I don't want to get on politics, but it's like th this is not political. I don't. I don't feel, but it, it's downright scary what they're doing, what they're absolutely doing. Um. Now that now D.C. It was a swamp until they. I'm gonna call it terraform. It, it might not be accurate, but it was a swamp until they came in and fixed it up. And when they built it. Uh, they do have a lot of Mas Masonic and other. I think I think you can call some of that Masonic symbolism. You can call it like a cult. It wasn't considered it back in the day, but you can consider it maybe a cult symbology uh, around. And it's all over. It isn't just the White House. It's all over the the Capitol. And uh, and I I you know everybody's got to make their own thing, but. You know, maybe it's real, maybe it's not, but that's that's the gist of it. And uh, uh, now there have been rumors for over 150 years of activity. Uh, they showed a video of one of the Bush twins. It's the one that I think my brother said it's Jenna Bush, but it's the one that's on the Today Show. And she, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I literally don't know. But she was talking about they never saw a ghost. 
they showed the video. This isn't oh well she said this or 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 we got we, we got a transcript or no she was on video on the Today Show I think she was talking to Hoda and uh, she said they never saw saw a ghost but they felt one at times and you know the being the felt like they were being watched they might have been watched by you know security cameras uh, maybe maybe they had a Maybe they had a stalker who, uh, in the Secret Service who was watching them through peepholes in the shower. I don't know. When you, you hear about some of the stuff those Secret Service people have done, uh, like the fucking cocaine and other parts, I, I think that it might not be them. Maybe it maybe it's not them. But there, there's there been some of those Secret Service that have done questionable things. I think they've been removed. But, you know, maybe. Uh and I, I'm in the same category. I never saw never saw anything that I remember. But every now and then I feel tingles, all the hair. I mean, just for no reason, all the hair on the back of my neck will stand out or I'll get my... Uh, I got a little bit of it right now where my... It's real light, but my... Uh, just talking about it, my uh, uh, hair follicles are standing up. And uh, But see, I always fear... I always feel that's just anxiety it's not anything real it's just you know you're watching a scary movie uh or you're cold and you know whatever but i i felt the same way and and the bush daughters i don't know if i believe her it could be a defect from her father's drug use she can be just you know maybe doing it for the ratings but she could be completely serious and, and i don't know and when when I was when I was getting to the point where I was get, gonna get off of it, they showed more uh, clips of her, and she said that I think it was her and her sister. There was a there was a pian there was a a fireplace. It was nighttime, and and she seemed serious. She she really seemed serious. Uh. But there was like a piano, clear as a bell, coming through the the fireplace or whatever. And uh, that was a little scoopooky. And she got down, and I believe she was talking. This is right as I was finishing up, so I'm going to probably rewind it and watch that a little bit. But... She was telling her, she goes, well, yeah, we were hearing this piano, and it was like 1920s music or, or earlier is what it what it felt like they were playing. And uh, they got, in the morning, I think they were talking to their dad or they were talking to their dad and mom or just their mom. And she goes, you're not going to believe what we heard last night. And they looked at them. The parents, one one or both of the parents, said, oh, we're not going to believe you? Like, like they had heard stuff too. And so maybe there's more of those stories in there, you know, and I don't care if it's just her or not. That was kind of it. Cause most of the time when they talked about it, Oh, well that, you know, it was all, it was all, uh, vague and nameless and she's gone out on the record and, you know, she hasn't been fired. So NBC doesn't think she's nuts. And, uh, and, but they said the White House sta White House haunting uh, White House haunting uh, really appeared to start in 1853, or at least it's the first documented. Uh, I don't know if I got the president's real name. Uh, I, uh, hang on, let me, I'm going to do a, oh, Franklin Pierce 
14th president of the United States. I had the name earlier, and I just couldn't remember. I think his wife's name was Jane. But uh, they... Uh, They, uh, yeah, the president's first lady, I believe her name was Jane. Uh, she was brought up in a very extreme, I and mean, they, they wrote it for that, for that time period. Like, there's a lot of them that we would consider extreme. I mean, uh, just to give you a little example, uh, it was an episode of the West Wing, the uh, the president had gone to a uh, he had gone to a old bookshop or, or something like that and he he went shopping it was it was like first or second season and he wouldn't let the wouldn't let the one press person take uh, take any press with her she got to go the chief, the deputy chief of staff got to go but uh, they uh, they no press. You know, it was just him going and, and a few of his staff that were friends. But he picked up, I think that was the one where he picked up a, a book on manners and etiquette by George Washington. And, like, I can't remember it all. But he, he read through there, George Washington felt that if you were a man, when you were sitting in a chair, you must keep both hands or both feet firmly on the floor you, you can't cross your legs or anything and sit straight back and have your hands on your legs. That was the proper way to, to be or something along those lines. And he made a comment about, well, what a fucking tight ass he was. And, and I want to give you a, an example. Uh, uh, I, I've never been a regular at, at these martial arts schools out of town. And, uh, they, uh, you know, most of them, you know, you go there, it's really cool. You go to the seminars and whatnot. And, uh, somebody, the one guy, I, he posted what Bruce Lee had for the rules of his dojo when, when he was alive and he had, he had like three of his people running his, uh, his schools. You had the Chinatown school. You had the one in uh, Seattle, Washington, I think. And then the other one, I can't remember where uh, James Lee's school, the school he was running was. And he was no relationship to Bruce Lee, but I can't remember where his, his was. And, but they had the, the rules. And I think they're pretty similar to the uh, the rules of a uh, Wing Chun dojo, but it's like, oh my God, I would absolutely hate hate training there. You know, it, it was just you know, it just seemed like too fucking strict. But again, you know, I wouldn't have liked uh, some of the the dojos here uh, because of the same thing. You know, it's just it's it's you know, to me, it's like a whole bunch of anal retentive people, but. Uh, you know, and there, there was, and this guy's got a great sense of humor. He, he, he and he's a really good instructor. Uh, but he had his school as a set, so I think it might be a Wing Chun thing. But uh, he had his list. Well, you're not allowed, you know. You, but again, when he's out on the, the thing, his his dojo rules don't apply, and he is just one hell of a guy. I mean, it's just real. But I'm, you know, reading her schools like God. I don't really know if I want to go to that school. It's just, it's, you know, it it ain't gonna be fun, you know. And to me, that that's one of the things I liked about the art I did. You you go there, you had fun, you took it seriously, but you were allowed to have fun. It wasn't, you know, this. This thing like from a movie, you know, the Cobra Kai, well, oh, stay up, you know, um, you, you got to uh, fool around and have a good time. And, uh, but yeah, they, they, they said she was uh, brought up in a very extreme religion. Her father was a reverend, was a reverend there, or a reverend. I think we could view it as a cult to worry about. I, I honestly think that that would be fair, um, that we could view it as a cult. Because they, they said it, they were real fixated on, uh, they were real fixated on 
sin and guilt and you know and it just it sounded like a sounded like a really not a fun thing and I think we could worry about them like a cult like we would worry about Heaven's Gate uh, the Branch Davidians somewhat some of the more strict sects of the uh, Mormon faith uh, and, and the sex cult that uh, the only woman G GOP SCOTUS woman is allegedly from, this is just coming out but they they were they were referring to her as a uh, uh, a handmaiden's tale and it, it was it was a I don't really know but it was like a really violent sex or, or what it it didn't sound good now maybe it's maybe it's all but I, I sincerely hope I think I don't think she should be in in the Supreme Court anyways along with a lot of the people that are in there right now but if that's what she really came I, I knew she was a religious nut is you know with my take on it but my God, if she's in this uh, like sex cult, I, I really hope she gets some help. Um, you know, she still shouldn't be in there, but uh, I, I really hope she gets some help. I, I really do. Uh, the president might have got in this after tragic deaths uh, of multiple children. Uh, before he got into the White House, all but one of his children died. And so you could be looking at the same uh, thing where you uh, you become an anti-vaxxer because your kid got sick right around the time you got his vaccines. You know, you you have a you have a a personal tragedy, and you're willing to believe any fucking bullshit they tell you to uh, to make sense of it all. Uh, so it it. You know, and again, I'm I'm not trying to be mean to anybody, but uh, you know that that's what you get, and it, it's you know, it, and I I've I've had these talks with people. I ran into a lot of these fucking nut jobs when I was down in Indiana. But uh, there was one guy, he wanted to talk to me because he, he was the same thing. He uh, he got into it because, uh, you know, his kid his kid got sick. Well, they, they've taken out everything these guys found offensive in the vaccine. Everything they said was causing it, it's all been taken out. They found it, and they, they still claim, you know, without any reason, without any logic, without any proof, well, it... It's well because if they, you know, they took all the stuff out you were complaining about, well, then the problem should go away, and it didn't. And the fact is, uh, we are probably dealing with an environmental issue. And down there in Indiana, wouldn't surprise me a bit that you know you've got fucking you know shit environment, shit regulations from the Republican that run it. Um, would not blame, it would not bother me a bit. If or would not surprise me a bit if that wasn't the cause, but it's it's either it's either we uh, you know the microwaves, uh, something's in the food, something in the environment, uh, something in there is causing it. it, and it could be uh, it could be related to if any of the people down there were exposed to certain things like either LSD in the 60s. Maybe they got an ancestor who was experimented, who was like uh, experimented on with LSD by the, the CIA. Maybe someone in the family got uh, got connected to uh, uh, the bomb testing back in World War One. Could be any reason, but we gotta we gotta drop the bullshit, and then maybe we can get to the truth. But as long as these people keep railing against the vaccines, which it isn't. Um, you're never going to find out what's really causing it. Um, spiritualism now started around 1848. I believe it was Hydesville. If it's not Hydesville, it's real similar to that. Hydesville, New York. The, and the, it was this family. It was rural. And these Fox sisters could hear knocking this is the claim you 
now. Don't, don't. I'm trying to keep an open mind. But the Fox sisters could hear knocking, and then they finally figured out. Again, I, I'm not. I, I'm not. I don't have a dog in the fight. I'm trying to take it as 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 legitimate for the sake of the argument. Uh, they started. Uh, they claimed they could communicate with the dead. Uh, it was around now that the Ouija board got started. I can't remember what it was in regards to, though. But they, they ma made a comment that this is around the time that the Ouija board got started. Or got into mainstream. And uh, I was watching something. And I don't remember what it was. It might have been... It was either just on strange shit. It might have been in reference to... It wasn't done by the Skinwalker Ranch people that are currently on the, but it might have been that it was the Skinwalker or something talking about the Skinwalker, but there was somebody, and I, he, I didn't recognize the name. The name meant nothing to me, but even if it had, I'm not sure I would remember. This was like a year or two ago that I that I heard it, and right now I just can't remember the name. But I seriously doubt if I'd remember it because I'm not good. I'm better with faces and voices than names. And I didn't recognize the name. I, I just did not recognize the name. But they were talking about him having problems. And he, he thinks that many of the problems that, we, that we're experiencing exist because things like Ouija boards have been used without knowledge. And something like a door or portal has been left open. And, again, I don't know. I, I just don't know. But, uh, uh, you know, cause I've, I've talked about now this I'm a little more, this I'm, a, I'm a, a little more sure of. But, like, when you see these old cultures, whether it's the Peace Pipe or Hatha, Hiawatha or whatever, uh, they all seem to have, like, a religion for how you deal with the uh, uh, the hallucinogenic drugs, and this was something I I I I I've mentioned this before, but I try not to do it every time. But uh, when uh, uh, Graham Hancock, he's he's one like Rogan. I think he's a little more careful than Rogan, but you know, I I don't think it takes much to set this off. But uh, <coughs> he was uh, talking about doing these, these, the experiments with this Hiawatha and other stuff that he's experimented with. And there was some guy, he, he was a guru, guru or something that he had met somewhere. And this guy, uh, it was like, it was like a plate or a tray of uh, hallucinogenic mushrooms for like the group and he just went and gobbled it up it I'm not, I'm not sure if it should have been a lethal dose but it was definitely a dose level that if it wasn't lethal Graham felt that it would fuck you up you know you, you wouldn't you know, you'd be kind of like I, I I I worked with this guy he was a, he was an okay guy uh, and what would happen is he would drink beer and you know most people they have like when they when they get drunk they have a, a point where they start to degrade he had a cliff he would drink beer drink beer and then boom you know he he just like go he'd be acting goofy you know there's no there's no there's no warning it it would just he would hit that cliff and he'd go off of it and he'd either pass out or he would um uh, just be like all babbling and shit it's like oh my god and uh well, one of his friends wasn't quite that bad, but I went, I went, <laughs> I went fishing with him, and when, and when they, and when they came in, when they came in from fishing, that one guy was just wrecked, and, and, and he, he got out of the boat, he had the, he had the rope, and he was literally, you know, we, we tried to sit him down, and figured he could sit there and hold the boat, but when we got back with the car. 
he was passed out. He was just falling. He passed out. He'd fallen over. He didn't fall into the water. That could have happened. And uh, I think the rope was coming out of his hands. We got back just in the nick of time for many, many reasons. And, uh, but yeah, there, you know, like I said, alcoholism isn't really a real thing here in Wisconsin. It should be, but it isn't. And, uh, but, uh, these Fox sisters, they came to live in the white house and performed, performed, I, I believe it was multiple seances for the first lady. And, uh, and then a seventh day advent, uh, it was in 1853. Uh, a Seventh Day Advent preacher wrote a book about it. And again, I, I don't know. I'm just presenting it to you. But that if he believed that, you know, if they believed what they had wrote on his tomb or grave, you know, it could be possible for a demon to come in the guise of his son, and and they would believe it was his son. That, that's that's that was I, he wrote a book. That's what the claim was. So, you know, whether it's real or not, it, somebody put their name on it. That that was a real thing. This surprises me. Like, like this whole thing, demons in the White House, this whole thing just freaked me out. Um, uh, it was around this time a bill came w for the expansion of the United States. And... Some of this you may have heard about. This was the uh, Kansas-Nebraska Act. Um, I don't, I don't know these by names, but I think this was just the start of it, or it might have been the end of it. I don't know, but this one here would expand the United States, but it would do it expanding slavery. Uh, as if, as, and I'm not. Again, this is not a trust, but verify. This is a verify, but um, you know, if you if don't don't just trust me. If you're gonna if you're gonna get into this, if you, don't go repeating it until you verify if it's real or not. But as my understanding of it is, there was the people in the South pretty much wanted to give slavery to all the new territories, and the the some of the people in the North wanted to not give slavery to all the new terror. You like in that one side wanted to make all the new ones like slavery states and, or territories. And some of them didn't want any, any more states to get slavery. They were, they were willing to let it go with what they had. I think the Nebraska Kansas act or Kansas Nebraska, act, I think it's the one that basically it might've been the one that, established the Mason Dixon line and all new settlements south of it would be slavery and all of them that were created after that above the Mason Dixon line uh, they wouldn't be slavery and uh, and they said that he opposed it before you know it, you know when this thing came before he had ve vehemently opposed it before and he he didn't want it and uh i think that's what it was and that when it came this time he agreed to it and they they uh speculated that the idea was the devil you know because it expanded slavery and they, they speculated that maybe he was, you know, possessed by a demon or being influenced by a demon because I, I'm not making this up. This this is what the documentary said. If they're lying to me, then I'm lying to you, but I'm not doing it on purpose. And uh, but they, they made it like it was a bad thing. And I've heard it historians, you know, give the opposite view that they felt that if the Civil War had happened earlier, the South would have won. Uh, if you read, I, I highly recommend this. If you read the book, uh, uh, I think Kennedy wrote it. Uh, it was, uh, 
Ah, oh, I can't remember. Uh, let me let me see here. Hang on a sec. Okay, it's the profile in Courage. Uh, I, 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 I couldn't remember, but yeah, it was the Profile in Courage Award. Uh, th that he did, it was his book, it was Profiles in Courage, and he wrote about, this was one of the guys, uh, there, well, there were, I think this was brought up for a couple of them. There were, because he had one for people who had risked it all and didn't pay the price, and then he had the ones who risked it all and it cost them. And this guy I'm sure was in there, maybe, maybe not. But when I read this book, they explained that there were some senators that uh, instead of letting the South or the North go to war then, they, they just sort of, they got everybody, they got compromises, they got, it was like the guy came up with the Mason-Dixon one. And it was their view, uh, it was his view and it was others' view, that if the war had happened then, the South would have won. And, you know, when, when Lincoln finally hit, and I'm not sure it was even... Uh, it, it was like a conscious decision by like Lincoln or or others, but uh, it, it would just happen. But it was a couple years after the the North had had basically gotten industry, and so that they could basically build at a better rate than what the slave owners could. And it was the same thing, I think, Yamamoto or whatever, uh, in World War II, he had gone to school over here or something like that. And when they asked him about it, he goes, well, he goes, I feel I can give you absolute uh, superiority on the, uh, on the ocean for uh, like six months or something like that. And, uh, but he said after that, uh, he goes, you know, he was, he was afraid that America would turn its factories into war production, which is exactly what they did. And, uh, so it's like something like six months would start to be the peak and then we'd come down. You know, he, he felt that they'd come down and it was the same thing here. They needed to get the, the industry built. And then once they did, then, you know, but it, nobody made a conscious decision, but they're looking back at it and, uh, you know, the, the Civil War, you know, the, the, we're looking back on it and you got to think if there was something there, uh, regardless of what it looked like, regardless of what the religious nuts felt like, maybe it was a good thing. If it was the devil, maybe it was the good thing. And th this kind of goes with that thing I was talking about earlier where, uh, you know, they, you know, you've got, you know, older books that have been banished by the church and forgotten by the church that were dug up in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Uh, these are things, you know, they, they talk about the fallen, the watchers. And, you know, the only, what the hell? Um... You know, want, they call them the Watchers. Well, the only thing in the Watchers that, you know, the only thing like the Watchers that appear in there are the fallen angels. 
And the Watchers were some of the fucking, they were like right from the throne of God and, and whatnot. And then you take the, the you know, the these creatures they talked about. Well, they were here to help us. They were here to give us intelligence. Well, in the Bible, the only thing that sounds like that is the snake in the Garden of Eden. 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 And so, again, maybe maybe these maybe these uh, Christians were were living a lie. They were they were being told lies. They were preaching lies. And maybe maybe they were there helping him to pass that so that we would eventually win the civil war. Maybe it was a force of good. Um, they brought in experts, and you know, to bring because the, what it was is the seance. They, I think they, it's, I, I don't think this is speculation. The uh, Jane started seeing her son after some of the seances, and that's where they think it might be a devil or whatever, or demon or whatever. And they brought in experts. And they might have had an exorcism. Um, it, 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 I, again, I'm I'm not telling you what to believe. I'm not even telling you to believe it. I just, for the sake of argument, acted like it was true. Uh, that was pretty much the, uh, the, the as far as I got, because it was going on to a different president's time. But... I feel like I got cheat. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. That is good mojo. I might get enough of them where I start carrying one around regularly with me. But, uh... But yeah, that that I thought it was pretty good. I I don't know if I believe it, but it it was it was interesting to watch because you know we don't think about it, but back then there was a lot of shit, you know, and, and we consider it maybe crazy now. But uh, when you, I mean, and this is another one if you get a chance to watch it, the Pope's Exorcist. Uh, that one there was another one because again, you had the Pope. You had the Pope's exorcist. And yet a lot of these Vatican people, they just didn't believe in it anymore. They, they wanted to eliminate his position. And I, I I do not know if that's real or not. But at the end of the movie, uh, his the cardinal or whatever that he, he was you know, under, uh, he got taken over by the fucking demon. It, it fucking reached out and snatched him. And then when the exorcist got back to the uh, Vatican... They, they said that he had taken it again. I don't know. I literally don't know. But I would say that the Vatican believes it. And it's like, I don't know about this. Uh, I really don't know about this, uh, this last Pope theory. But the Vatican believes in it, at least on some level. Because they canonized the guy. You know, they, they locked up his thing uh, on the advice. They had locked up his, they locked up, uh, they locked up the, uh, well, I, I don't know, but um, they they locked it up. Or no, no, they didn't lock it up, but uh, they, they canonized him. That's not something that's easy to do. They fucking canonized him. I would say they believed it. Um, 
And the way you take a look at I'm not kidding you. You take a look at this uh, priest now. I just heard that he, he made some comment. That, let me see if I can bring that up. Uh, Yeah. Um, oh, wait, no, that was. It, they made it sound like it was. I'm not finding it, but uh, my understanding is, uh, hang on, yeah, oh, you good girl, oh, you good girl, can you just give me some time, I'm wrapping my stream up, yeah, and I'll come get you supper, yeah, you just, you say hi to my stream, right there, you look right in there, you just say hi to my stream, but, uh, I thought it was a new one. I, I'm not seeing it, but I thought he just basically spoke out about these mega churches and how it wasn't right. And I'm like, I, I'm again, maybe maybe it's what he believes, anyways. But he's doing some he's doing some stuff that's even extreme for your your good popes from back in the day. Uh, he, he you know he he allowed he allowed auditors in into the Vatican Bank to look for the criminality that was hidden in there. Uh, he started cranking down on the conservative uh, cardinals. and uh, But I, I think he was these, these mega churches. He was saying that they're not very Christian. It, at least that's what I, under, I understood. I'm not seeing any... I'm not seeing any any of it here. And I think, I think that would stand out. Yeah, maybe maybe I got it wrong, but I I don't think maybe it was on YouTube. It might have been, it might have been something from uh, from uh, old uh, like a couple years ago. But I don't. It seems like it was new, and uh, but when you look at him, something has lit a fire under his ass, and you know again it might not be true, but I I think that this shows that the church believe or at least parts of the church believe it to be true. And, but it, it's just, oh my God, it, it is just fucking good. It is just fucking good to see the church doing that. Um, oh, well, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this out. If uh, you are watching this on YouTube, uh, smack that like button, button hit the uh, subscribe and uh, hit the notification so you know when I get more. And uh, if you're watching on this, please subscribe. Uh, Go ahead and leave comments in YouTube 
uh, please do. And uh, have, I hope everybody has a good day.